Hey everybody, I'm up here today in my office rather than downstairs doing the Motivational Monday simply because the weather here is really bad. It's really dark and gloomy and I cannot get good light down there. So I came back up here to my office to make this Motivational Monday for you guys and so let's get started. We're going to talk today a little bit about Gideon. So sit back, grab yourselves a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. everybody. Today I'm going to talk just a little bit about Gideon in the sixth chapter of Judges, and I'm going to do a little bit of a series on Gideon if that's something that you all might like to hear. So let's just jump right in and let's get started. This particular passage of scripture takes place in the book of Judges. The book of Judges is about a specific period during the Israelite history. Now, during this period, everybody did what seemed right in their own eyes. Now, when I was a kid, everybody I knew was seemed like a good person, so I thought that was a good thing, and it was only till much later that I realized, no, that's not good if everybody just does what seems right to them. We've got to do what seems right to God. Now, just a little backstory. The children of Israel had once again did things that were just wrong. They had rebelled against God. So God basically turned them over to the country and to the people of Midian. And the Midianites had been oppressing them for seven years. Now, this is not the first time they had been oppressed or mistreated or really basically tried to, uh, you know, enslaved, if you will, by another country. This is not their first time. This is not going to be the last but this one is real specific because it's got the story of Gideon, which I think is just fascinating. So they were under a seven-year oppression, and they were starving. They were hungry because the Midianites would come in and pretty much pillage everything they had. They would murder, rape, kill, destroy, take their crops, and do whatever pretty much that they wished in their land. So, so here we find Gideon. Now, Gideon has just harvested his wheat and he is threshing it in the, a wine press. Now, that's not the best place to thresh grain, and if you've ever seen anybody, any videos of anybody threshing grain, you throw it up in the air, and then you catch it and shake it, and it separates the wheat from the chaff, and the wheat falls down to the ground, and the chaff blows away. So that's kind of how that works. So here he is in the bottom of a wine press trying to thresh some grain so he and his family don't starve to death. So while he's here doing that, in hiding, the angel of the Lord appears to him. And here's what he said. And this is where we're going to start. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite. I don't know if I said that right or not. While his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. So let's go back and let's talk about that just a little bit. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. Now, the Hebrew word for angel of the Lord is malek. Now, what that means is simply this, a messenger. It could be a human representative or it could be an angel. It could be any of those. That word could mean any of those things. It is also at times used for God. So at this particular juncture, all we know is it is an angel of the Lord. So when the angel appears to Gideon, the angel says this, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Now the King James Version says, mighty warrior. Now, what does that mean, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior? Well, here's, here's exactly what it means. Gideon was hiding. And he was not a bold warrior. He wasn't a commander of a big army at this time. He wasn't anything. He was just a man trying to get by and trying to keep from starving to death. That's what he was at that particular time in Israelite history. He didn't feel like a mighty warrior. He didn't feel like a mighty man of God. He was hiding. But the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, here is Gideon's response. He said, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And, and where are all his miracles that our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. There's a couple of interesting things in this passage of Scripture. And the first thing is, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord. Now the word that is used for that in Hebrew is very interesting. It's the word Adonai. 
Whenever you see in Old Testament writings in the scripture, it is normally going to be the word Adonai for the words, my Lord. When the Jewish rabbis pray to God, they call God Adonai. Now, I don't know what the custom was at this particular time. I don't know. But I do know that it's a different word when he says, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us. So that's a different word. It's a different Lord. Anytime you see the words L-O-R-D and all of the letters are capitalized, that is Yahweh, not Adonai. Yahweh. So you can say this like this. Adonai, if Yahweh is with us, why are all these things happening to us? When you speak about Adonai versus Yahweh, you need to kind of think, you need to do a mental shift in your mind of the name of God, which is Yahweh, to Adonai, which is my Lord. And that's important because it almost seems like that Gideon is talking to two separate people. He isn't, but it does seem like that when you read this passage of Scripture. Gideon asks a whole bunch of questions, just like we would ask. What's going on with this? Why are all these things happening to us? If, if, if Yahweh is with us, why are we so oppressed? That was the bottom line. That's what he wanted to know, and with good reason. Because Gideon probably did not remember the prophecies. Gideon was several generations behind Joshua. So he probably didn't remember or didn't know the stories. He may not have heard all of that. Yes, I'm sure he heard about Yahweh because here he knew the name of God. But he probably didn't know, hey, we're in, this, <laughs> we're in this shape because we left the Lord. We think Yahweh's deserted us, but in fact, we deserted him. So let's read on. So in verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So the word Lord here is again, the L-O-R-D is all caps. So that's going to be Yahweh speaking, speaking to Gideon. So Yahweh said to Gideon, go in the might that you have. Go with what you've got. Take what you've got and go. I'm with you. I'm enough. Go. I'm sending you. Now, what can we glean from that? in the 21st century, because I wanted to look at this, basically, I wanted to pull out some Hebraic words here so that we could kind of get a notion here. You notice that there's a shift between when the, the author of the book of Judges, and we don't know who that is, but when the author of the book of Judges wrote the book of Judges, there's kind of a shift, because Gideon is, is, is addressing God as my Lord, which could be a title of respect, just saying, you know, my personal Lord. It would kind of be like we would address the king, like if it was Henry VIII or someone back in medieval times would say, yes, my Lord, no, my Lord. They were the Lord over that specific territory. And they were the personal Lord of the people who lived there, just like Yahweh is the Lord of Gideon. Now, we see that shift when we, in verse 14, where it says, then the Lord Yahweh. So we know this is actually Yahweh, a visitation from the Most High God down here to Gideon. Now, what can we learn from that? God lives in us if we are Christians. We carry him around with us all the time if we have accepted his son, Jesus. So when he sends us on an errand or he gives us a task to do, he equips us to do it. Now, we have strength and we have might in him. And we have a specific skill set that he has gifted us with. The one thing that he has given us is the Holy Spirit. And that's the best thing that we can have because the Holy Spirit will always show us what to do. But just as he has given us the Holy Spirit, he has given each of us with a set of unique talents and abilities to do the things that he sets before us. And if he asks us to do something that we cannot do in our own might, which he often does, then we have to know and take a moment and step back and say, okay, the Lord is with you, woman of valor. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior, because God has sent me to do this task. And who he sends, he equips. 
Now that's what we can learn from the lesson of Gideon. This is lesson number one in talking in the book of Judges in the sixth chapter. Now I'm going to do a little mini series on Gideon. We're going to carry it through to the end of Gideon's life if I feel so lit. If you all like this. If you don't, then just tell me because I'm really studying the book of Judges and what I study, you know, you all pretty much get too. So I wanted to talk about this today and just let you know that if you feel like God has given you something to do, do it with all your might. Because he, number one, he expects no less. He expects us to trust him and do what he tells us to do. He wouldn't send us if he didn't. And if we are not necessarily naturally equipped to do something, and he still says, go do it, we need to try it anyway. Because then when we get the victory over whatever that is, that victory is so much sweeter because then we know God has done it. Obviously, God is not going to equip you to get up on stage and play the guitar if you've never picked one up. I mean, let's be, let's be realistic about this. But if God is calling you to speak to someone, or if, he's, if you feel a prompt in your spirit after reading his word to go and maybe witness to someone, that's something he's called all of us and has equipped all of his saints to do. Think about Gideon right here for a minute. Now, Gideon had questions. He had a lot of questions. And we're going to learn to, next time exactly what Gideon did to confirm all this. But Gideon has a great story here. And we're going to learn about Gideon. Was he perfect? No. None of the saints of God are. None of them. Even the ones that we kind of have a tendency to exalt, like David or Abraham, they were not perfect either. And that's what's so wonderful about the Bible. It's full of imperfect people, so we all fit right in. But when God tells us to do something, do it. If you're feeling that prompting from the Holy Spirit, check it out with his word. Make sure that it lines up with the word of God. He's not going to call you to go sleep with somebody else's husband. He's not going to call you to go lie to somebody about something. He's not going to call you to sin. So just keep that in mind. But if he is telling you to do something like start a ministry or even just bake a cake for someone or maybe he's calling you to take a meal to a loved one. Maybe he's calling you to just pray for somebody. Those are promptings from the Holy Spirit that we need to hear, to heed. Because you know what? All of those things make us a mighty warrior of God if we do it in the name of Jesus. And you know what? Even better than that, when we do that, it makes the enemy really, really furious. But we don't care because he's under our feet. Listen, guys, I hope you all have a great day. God bless you all. Love you guys. Maranatha.